Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for the media speaks, and we're going to charge into the news because I have a whole bunch of it. I also want to give a shout out to Neopa Radio, who is going to be syndicating the show. We're jumping through exactly how to make sure the feed goes into what they're doing, but it's going to be happening, and it's going to be great. Uh, NuclearNews.net, there's a hyphen in the middle to mess you all up. Harvard professor warns on the hazards of cumulative low-level radiation. Now, paying attention to this is going to be very, very important because I know most of you know what cumulative means, but some, some of you may not be understanding why it's applicable. Anything that is cumulative gets worse every time you're exposed to it. And for the most part, there isn't a way to make it non-cumulative or to, to get rid of the damage. It gets worse every time and very few things will make it better. Yes, bentonite clay, vitamin C will take some nuclear elements uh, out of your body. But for the most part, once it's there, every time it's there, it gets worse. Um, how many of you know what XP is, where people can't be in sunlight? Every time they get in sunlight, it takes them one step closer to their death. And there isn't a time that they can take the damage back. Cumulative means progressively worse. We're going to find out that food does it in a little bit. That's why I'm saying to pay attention. We're going to stay on topic. Fukushima for the first one. California newspaper health effects in U.S. from Fukushima radiation. A, standard prof a Stanford professor. Am I concerned? Yes, I am. That's because I know radiation. There's increased risk. Avoid radiation as much as you can. UX Berkeley, uh, UC Berkeley, nuclear professor, everyone is really scared of it. That's what the problem is. And there's a link on the NE News for the quote. La Jolla Light, California newspaper, Yahola maybe. Uh, scientists weigh in on status of radioactive waters from Fukushima reaching the California coast. The potential health effects cut to the heart of the contemporary scientific debate on the biological consequences of low-level radiation. So what I'm talking about, for those of you that are new to the topic, long-time viewers, bear with me. The meltdown, melt through, melt out, that happened in Japan in 2011, March, is still as you hear this at 4.32 in the morning, 7.17.2014, the meltdown is still occurring and still poisoning the food supply that is coming out of California. Now, I know how much produce and nuts and uh, things like that that California produce. You want to limit as much food as you can from California, particularly milk. California is the main issue with these milk problems we're having because cesium adheres to milk. And California is glowing. Am I saying that you should not live in California, Oregon, Alaska, Hawaii? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm glad we're clear. I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. I've got some quotes here for all the people that think that radiation isn't a big deal out there. Um, and I would advise you to heed them and pass them on to others who you care about. Dr. Herbert Abrams, Harvard and Stanford University Professor of Radiology and Principal Researcher for the National Research Council's study, quote, biological effects of ionizing radiation, who testified before Congress about its conclusions, says the underlying premise that has to be considered as you talk about radioactivity, the water, that'd be the ocean, and people being exposed to it is that the effects of radiation are cumulative. What is the turning point? Common sense is to avoid radiation as much as you can. With the radiation from Fukushima predicted to linger here for years, Abrams said the potential dose should not be dismissed as negligible. In other words, oh, don't worry about it. It's background radiation. It's harmful. Don't listen to that. That is an incorrect view. Am I concerned? Yes, I am. That's because I know radiation pretty well. It shakes up the cell and it goes after the genetic material. That's what you and your family is made out of. The bottom line is that radiation has a carcinogenic agent cancer-causing for you top 40 fans. There is increased risk. 
But how do you translate that into understandable discussion of what's going to happen to guys on their surfboards? I don't know. Abrams issues his own warning about these scientists declaring that low-level radiation to be absolutely safe. Quote, physicists, or at least some of them, are the people in the nuclear industry itself. They play down the risk to such low doses, but they never talk about it being cumulative. Each little dose. At what point does it equal a big dose? Get out of California! Professor K. Vetter, UC Berkeley Nuclear Engineering Department. People don't understand nuclear radiation and the impact. That's another doctor we have. Everyone is really scared of it. It should not pose any health risk to swimmers, driver, divers, people on the beach, the psychological stress and psychological impact which might actually cause health effects. We should never underestimate that. In other words, trying to say it's all in their heads. Friends, this is bad. This is really, really bad. And anytime you hear about how safe something is, it's not safe. It's always dangerous. You can help yourself by not eating foods from California if you can help it. Avoiding milk. Avoiding mushrooms. They soak up radiation out of the ground like a sponge. You can also fight back by pulling your money out of GE, General Electric, or TEPCO because that's who caused this. Um, if you're in a mutual fund and they're in it, get out of it. High levels of vitamin C, you're looking for around uh, 3,000 milligrams a day. Bentonite, clay, calcium to fight strontium. Look up Chris Busby, calcium. These are some things you can do to help yourself. Um, economic collapse, Michael Snyder. Big corporations have an overwhelming amount of power over our food supply. This is important. From our fields to our forks, huge corporations have an overwhelming amount of power over our food supply every step of the way. Right now, it says there are more than 313 million people living in the United States, and the job of feeding all of those people is almost entirely in the hands of a few dozen monolithic companies. If you don't like how our food is produced or you don't believe that it's healthy enough, it isn't very hard to figure out who is to blame. These mammoth corporations are not in business to look out for the best interest of the American people. Rather, it says, the purpose of these corporations is to maximize wealth of the shareholders. So listen to this. This is uh, from the U.S. agricultural sector. The U.S. agricultural sector suffers from an abnormally high levels of concentration. Most economic sectors have concentration ratios of 40%, meaning that the top four firms, only four, in the industry control 40% of the market. If the concentration ratio is above 40%, experts believe competition can be threatened and the market abuses are more likely to occur. The higher the number, the bigger the threat. How bad is it? Four companies own 83.5% of the beef market. That is GMO fed cows which screw up your health when you eat it. The top four firms own 66% of the hog industry. That is sausage, that is pepperoni, that is your pizza, that is your ham. The top four firms control 58.5% of the broiler chicken industry. In the seed industry, four companies control 50% of the propriety seed market and 43% of all commercial market worldwide. Lastly, when it comes to genetically engineered crops, that is to say poison, just one company, Monsanto, boasts control of over 85% of U.S. corn acreage and 91% of soybean acreage. Soybean, most of what's in Taco Bell. So who are these companies that are causing all this trouble and who are jeopardizing our health? I'll name names. I've got no problem with it. We are looking at Kellogg's, PepsiCo, Nestle, Coca-Cola, Mars... Um, and Mondelez. How can you help? You can pull your money and your stocks out of there. You can make sure that when you buy something, it's not a branch off of those. How do you know? Look the article up at Economic Collapse, Michael Snyder. They've got an entire chart there. Don't like Michael Snyder? PrisonPlanet.com. The chart is right there, people. It says that the, uh, the distributors of this food are not very good citizens either. Among the windmills and... Uh, Crisote bushes of San Giorgionio Pass, a nondescript beige building stands flanked by water tanks. A sign at the entrance displays the logo of Arrowhead 100% mountain spring water, with water flowing over the snowy mountain. 
semi-trucks rumble in and out through the gates carrying load after load of bottled water. What's the problem with this, you might ask? The plant, located on a Morongo Band of Mission Indians Reservation, has been drawing water from wells alongside a spring in Mullard Canyon for more than a decade. But as California's drought, which is not caused by global warming, it's just a normal cycle, it's always happened for the last 1,000 years of recorded history, some people in the area question whether it's such a good idea because of the drought. And uh, there's people literally, uh, they can't even water their lawns, they can't wash their cars, they're literally having barely enough to even um, to even survive on, and they're drawing water out of the well and selling it to people. So, why does this matter, you ask? Why did I tell you what cumulative meant when you first clicked on the link? Infowars.com has this op. Junk food gets encoded in DNA of future children, scientists discover. Unfortunately, the loving Christelle lives off of cigarettes and food that isn't food. If there's not, if she's not smoking, she's eating something toxic. You'll say, do you want to go and get like real food? No. She wants to eat pizza rolls, smoke cigarettes, and drink something that tastes like tea but isn't. This stuff gets encoded into your DNA. The original article, by the way, was at RT.com. It gets encoded into your DNA. You pass it on to your children. Uh, not the same way that radiation does, but the same cumulative effect. You can't undo the damage it's done. In case you can't tell, I'm a little chubby myself. I'm no alien to fast food, but I do try to drink mostly vitamin water, um, some coffee, not copious amounts. Um, I try to avoid pop you try to eat regular, like real food that isn't a pizza roll, things like that. And what happens if you don't? My dad was 68, gallbladder liver, gone. Why? He shopped at Walmart. Aspartame. All the stuff they feed you in boxes, that's why. My mom, she's 67. In a nursing home, joints all messed up, body all screwed up, not even 70 years old. Why? Same diet. My dad was a diabetic, by the way, so he adhered to a healthy diet. He avoided sweets and that for the last 10, 15 years of his life. Aspartame, processed food, killed him. Now, I know most of you aren't going to listen to it. You're just going to go ahead and smoke your cigarettes and not pay any attention to me. But for those of you that are still somewhat concerned about your health and what happens to people when you have kids, what's happening to your DNA, then you might want to listen to this. It says, the next time you wolf down the Big Mac with large fries, consider you may be affecting more than your own waistline. Scientists now say that an unhealthy diet can be encoded into your DNA that is the building blocks of life for you Lady Gaga fans, and that it is passed on to future generations. By now, most people have heard various negative things about a Western diet. It's too fatty, it's too salty, and too sugary. It can cause problems in the immune system, disturb the chemical makeup of the stomach, and perhaps the most obvious of all symptoms, lead to obesity. And again, I eat way more Wendy's than I care to admit. Less than a lot of people I know, though. Now a study from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases in Maryland has provided yet another reason to drive past your favorite fast food drive through window. The deleterious effects of a poor diet it can leave a mark on your DNA, passing along the genes to your offspring. Why does my kid sick all the time? Well, this might be a reason. The harmful effects of an unhealthy diet, which is very easy to fix. These places could give you organic beef instead of giving you fast food beef. The harmful effects of an unhealthy diet can actually stretch across generations, wrote Ian Maley's, author of the study which appeared in the Nutritional Journal. And there's a, a chart that's going to go ahead and graphically give you much of the information that I'm about to give you here. Let me scroll down past it as my Time Warner internet cable is just as slow as humanly possible. It affects the uh, oral transfer from kissing. It uh, it can affect everything, breastfeeding. It can affect uh, the birth canal and even C-sections. Listen to this, friends. 
Miley's demonstrated that a mother's eating habits may potentially shape her child's flavor preferences even before birth, potentially skewing their palate towards anything from vegetables to sugary sweets. Passing along the proverbial sweet tooth could contribute to a child's propensity to become obese at some point in his or her life. Vegetables, eat them! Put the Big Mac down! When the mother's diet causes a harmful imbalance of her bacteria, she passes this imbalance onto her child and thus fails to present the ideal commensals for proper immune, edu- proper, proper immune education during her child's most critical development window, according to the study. The developmental imbalance leaves the baby's immune system poorly trained to fight off infections and encourages autoimmune and allergic diseases. Also, fathers, guess what? Maley's caution that the father's dietary choices in life also play an important role in the health of offspring. The paternal DNA can also be inherited by the offspring and incurred er, alter early development of the immune system. Basically, what's being put in our food, our cheeseburgers, our processed garbage, your pizza pockets, whatever, isn't just making you fat isn't just giving you cancer, isn't just giving you diabetes. It's changing the structure of the building blocks of life itself. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Uh, If you're in Canton, Ohio, you may want to check out uh, the Arcadia Grill on Court Avenue. I'll tell you what else you might want to do. You might want to go ahead and check out Mike McLaughlin. He's at Facebook.com, one of the most prolific, thought-provoking authors that you're going to find today. You're going to find him. Go to Facebook. Mike McLaughlin. Vampire stories, poetry, you name it. He writes it. It's really good. He sells them at reasonable rates. You can also find my work uh, on Amazon.com, Kindle House Publishing, Asleep Unknowing. It's a really gory, thought-provoking story. It's a combination of social, social commentary and horror. I have The Lucky Leprechaun. It's like a... Tales from the Crypt kind of story. It's 99 cents. 99 cents! And I also have uh, The Risen. It's a factual piece. It's a persuasive essay that proves that Christ rose from the dead and does so without using the Bible to do it. So, if you get a chance and you'd like to find something interesting, and that is where you may want to look. Friends, PrisonPlanet.com, Agenda 21 equals death. Am I saying we should get out of the United Nations? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why? Um... One world government has been warned about for years. Every time anybody ever gets close to it, something like Hitler happens. Rome, anyone? Also, let's not forget that there are a lot of extremist Muslim nations in the UN that outnumber the Christian organizations. So they go in every direction that pushes some form of uh, Islamic obedience onto all the other nations in it. Let Islam be Islam, let the West be West, let countries be countries. How about that? Signed in 1992 by multiple nations, including the United States, the United Kingdom, the United Nations, excuse me, Agenda 21, Sustainable Development. Uh, Agenda 21 is Agenda 666 is an urban planning action plan which calls for governments to eventually take control of all land use without leaving any decision making in the hands of private property owners. Does that sound like America? No. So why is America in the UN? Why did we sign on to this? I couldn't tell you. Other than the fact that uh, our country is being taken over and taken away from us. So here's some of the current urban planning trends of Agenda 21, and which include, but are not limited to, I hope you have your puke bucket handy, the closure of royal land for public use and erosion of royal property ownership. So if you live in the country, you can be told what to do with your own land and how to do it. <laughs> Keep in mind, man is not even warming the planet. Man-made global warming is an absolute lie. Look up climategate.com. The development of multi-use condos for the first floor design designated for businesses catering to the tenants above, encouraging condo dwellers to remain close to home, much like serfs in the Middle Ages. In other words, live in a building and don't leave that building. Don't drive and just sit there like a dog. Meanwhile, uh, Michelle Obama feeds her ugly face barbecue ribs all day while you're sitting there eating lettuce. 
The purposeful lack of easy freeway access in cities, which similarly ensures that residents never venture far from their neighborhoods. That's a good way to keep you home. We'll just take your freeway on ramps away. The construction of expensive and inefficient public rail systems in cities in order to increase centralized government control while also reducing and even banning the use of private transportation such as cars. You can't drive because Agenda 21 wants control of everything. The accelerated implementation of toll roads, especially toll roads that discourage driving by increasing prices for traveling or for driving in congested areas. What's the answer to this? I'll tell you real quick. I was in Chicago. I made the movie look up Becoming Paul Revere on the Media Speaks. The hell. I was in DeKalb. It was hell. There's these tolls to get on every freeway. How do you guys fight this? Drive right through them and don't put any change in. If enough of you do it in high enough numbers, you'll shut it down by simple default, people. The numbers are on your side. Do not succumb to this. Utilities monitored by smart meters, which can be controlled and shut off remotely by public utility companies. Friends, this is a nightmare. We need to get out of the UN. We definitely need to get out of Agenda 21. And we need to find thousands of people to quit. All in one community. Stop. Don't renew your licenses. Don't pay your fines. Don't pay your tolls. If enough of you in one area, I've said this a million times, if enough of you in one area band together and refuse to accept anymore, they can't put everyone in jail. If they do, the city will shut down. Think. This is how we fight back, people. Think. Use the thinking part of your brain. I'm begging you. John Rappaport, what are machines thinking? I love this article because Mark Dice, I, I love Mark Dice to death. I love a lot, uh, a lot of these people to death that keep saying that the singularity, a man's going to marry a machine, and the machine is going to think. And the machine's going to kill us because it's able to think. Machines are never going to be able to think. Quit reporting on this nonsense. We need to be more worried about what the machines are being programmed to do. This is the best article I've ever seen. Mark Dice, I know this is going to get back to you. I love you to death. But no, machines do not think. This is not the great problem we have in our future here. One scenario is that the machines will seek to turn humans into cyborgs. This is nearly happening now, replacing faulty limbs with artificial limbs. What a stupid quote. The concern I'm raising is that the machines will view us as unpredictable and a dangerous species. The machines will view. Not left they'll program to. Machines might view us the same way as we view human insects. Yeah, of course. Del Monte believes machines will become self-conscious. Yeah, and I'll become Santa Claus. And have the capabilities to protect themselves. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make them protect themselves. No doubt there. But it's not them thinking of it. It's us programming them to do so. These aren't quotes from some abstract satirical, satirical play designed to expose human stupidity. They're quotes tendered by physicist Louis de Monte, the author of The Artificial Intelligence Revolution, Will Artificial Intelligence Serve Us or Replace Us, from an interview with Dylan Love at Business Insider by 2045, the top species will no longer be humans, and that can be a problem. We're going to shoot this down point by point here. I love this article. The key to DeMonte's approach is, quote, number one, machines might decide to turn humans into cyborgs, and it's already happening with artificial limbs. In other words, just sit there gimpy. You may become a robot if you get a fake leg. Does that sound stupid to you? Me too. What? It says, excuse me, but humans are deciding to put those limbs on other humans. Machines are not. And even in some hospital of the future, if you had an AI android making all the surgical decisions, they wouldn't exactly, they wouldn't actually be choosing anything. They'd be programmed by humans. Why is it so hard for technocrats to understand? Because they infuse themselves with the mystical vision about artificial, artificial intelligence. They confuse operational compatibility with consciousness. In other words, they confuse how wise a machine looks when you've programmed it with how wise it really is, which is nothing at all. Machines viewing humans, there is no viewing. Machines don't think. 
They never have, they never will. They perform according to specs. They can be programmed to select from a number of options, the option that fulfills the prime directives humans have given them. And that process of selection is carried out according to patterns originally installed by humans. We don't need robotic humans. There aren't going to be any robotic people. They can be programmed, or ex uh, excuse me, they, there is no mystery here, it says. No mystical leap across barrier between non-conscious and conscious. But somewhere up the line, humans can be propagandized to believe that machines are alive and have rights, which they don't. I can't even believe I'm reporting on this. Ten technocracy abounds with a titanic amount of sheer BS. It's founded on severe apathy and degrading cynicism about what humans really are. So machines become the new gods. The cheese melt theory of collectivism feeds directly into the worship of machines. Individuals are weak and helpless. Therefore, they have to melt down into a collective glob in order to survive. And from the collective point of view, machines loom up as the most powerful entities in the world. Bow and pray the allegiance to artificial intelligence. Exactly. That's what people think is going to happen. It says again, humans invented these machines in the first place, but that's scrubbed from the equation. It's old news, hardly worthy of mention. God or life consciousness, it goes on, isn't going to pop up out of the head of some supercomputer in 2045, the designated year for the so-called singularity, when machine intelligence supposedly outstrips our own. In 2045, 56, or the year 3000, do you know what's going to happen? Nothing. Machines will still be machines, doing what they have always done. Yes, a mile-wide computer in the desert may be able to perform more operations than a toaster in a motel in Cincinnati, but the level of consciousness, the level of being alive in both machines is identical. Zero, as in none. The talent that Beyonce has, none. That kind of none. In a significant way, the whole machines will be alive business is a smokescreen utilized to conceal an agenda. That agenda is the overall planning and regulating of the global civilization, getting you into Agenda 21. The spacious propaganda you will find described satirized in hundreds of science fiction stories goes this way. If we had, our, if we had at our fingertips the total, the total sum of human knowledge, and if we could calculate with it at lightning speed, we'd find the optimum pattern of human society. We'd find the answer to the age-old question, how can we live in peace with each other? Sheer nonsense, it says. Such calculations, as always, depends on values and ideals. First principles. All solutions flow from these values. You cannot make a uh, Sharia law Muslim except a Baptist Christian. You cannot get a Baptist Christian to find that the way to personal freedom is to obey Satan. There's no way to do that. Conclusions are drawn by human thought processes of which machines have none. Says machines don't discover values. First principles are prior assumptions made by humans. People have been arguing and fighting wars over these principles for centuries. Exactly. Computers are not going to be outthinking us, and we do not need robotic citizens. This whole singularity talk is absolute, utter nonsense. And no one loves science fiction and horror novels more than I do. But come on, people. Um, this is a real quick one. Smugglers throw road spikes at border agents in bold escape attempt. Um, chase ends in 23 illegal immigrants app apprehended at InfoWars Adam Salazar. This isn't going to go in the direction that you think it is, but I left a comment on an InfoWars line and comment line, and a, a slew of people were too stupid to understand what I meant. So I'm going to go ahead and spell it out for you. Over the weekend, the human smugglers led South Texas Border Patrol agents on a harrowing chase spanning five towns, which ultimately netted the staggering 23 illegal immigrants. A witness alerted agents after seeing people being loaded into a truck near the border town of Weslaco. Agents attempted to pull the driver over, 
but he insisted proceeding towards smashing into another car. Unfazed, agents say the driver began lobbing booby traps at his pursuers. The driver reportedly threw out spikes flattening the agent's tires. Cat traps, they're called. Cat spikes, running spikes. You can make them out of sharpened jacks. I'm not interested. You guys already know my, my take on the uh, immigration. If you entered illegally, you should not be allowed to leave. Be here, you should have to go. It also should be easier and cheaper to get in legally than it is. That's my stance. What I've always wanted to see happen is you know those freeway turnaround zones that nobody else can use, but cops cut through them all the time, and they sit there with the little radar guns and laser guns to give you tickets. Go by there when there's nobody there in the middle of the night. Take a handful of these spikes and pepper them in that turnaround zone. I've said this for 15 years. When the cop pulls in there, he'll get an immediate four flat tires. You ain't ticketing jack. That's what I'm in favor of. Is it legal? No. I'm in favor of non-violent revolution. That's what I'm in favor of. Don't shoot the cop. If you shoot a cop and you say you did it, you're a fan of my show, I'm not a fan of you, don't ever listen to me again, you're scum. You fight back by not hurting people and by disobeying in mass numbers. Anyway, somebody on InfoWars said that I was in favor of throwing them on the freeway and that other people have to use the freeway. Some people are so dumb that, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna say? No, don't throw cat spikes on the freeway. Uh, Lee, Lou Rockwell blog, uh, last thing I'm going to get to today, and it is the dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. For those of you that don't know, I do a massive Fukushima update once.